So in this video, I'm going to take a look at the new reference files functionality of TBC version 5.6. When you open a new project in TBC, you now have two new options, reference files and reference surfaces. Let's bring in a file, a reference surface here to start off with. So I'm just bringing in a tin model of an original ground model. And when you bring that into this project, it's now stored within the current project. What I'm going to do is I'm going to save this project and I'm just going to call it existing surface and say save. Having done that, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring in a second instance of TBC. And this time I'm going to bring in a second surface called the design surface to this project. So now I've got two instances of TBC open, one with the design surface, one with the existing surface in it. And let's say now for this one I want to calculate the volumes between this and the surface in the other project. This is where reference files come in. If I click on reference files, I can browse in here until I find the existing surface that I just created. And say open it. And what that will do now is it loads the reference file in the background. And so if I turn off my features here now, I come back down here and just say turn off the design surface and turn on the reference file. You can see the reference file is down here and it tells me there's one reference file loaded. I can put as many reference files open at any one time as I want to. Now if I click on this object, you see I can't click on it. But if I try to draw a line, let's say I want to create a line string. And let's say I'm going to call it, call it break line. And I'm going to put it on layer zero is fine. And then say OK. What you can do with reference files and reference surfaces is you can see the snaps are working. So it's using the snaps here, and I'm using these snaps, including the surface mesh and vertex. So when you're actually running a line command, you can actually snap to a surface that's in a reference file. Now, reference files have their own properties. If I click on the here and I go to properties, you can see the properties of the reference file. Now, when you load a reference file here, it's got the, the uh, file name and path. It has the, the fact that the file is open. And currently I'm using the all view filter. You can have as many view filters set up in a reference file as you want, and you can apply them here. That will control, in addition to the ability to turn off the reference file and turn it on, the view filter allows you to control what's visible within the reference file at any one time. They're not controlled by the layer manager over here. They're controlled purely and simply by the view filter or by the visibility of the reference file. This ignore lock file basically means that when the external file is saved and refreshed, then this one will get updated accordingly. When I go in here, you'll see under reference files here in the Project Explorer that this one here is in black. But if this surface got updated, then this would turn red. And I could right click on this and I could say, uh, here I can then say add um, or update the reference file um, information. That would then go back out to the original file and reference it back in again with the new updates that have been made. Okay, we'll have a look at that in just a minute. So when I'm drawing a line, I can snap. I can see the reference file. If I look at the reference files here, I can also change things like whether it's enabled or not. So I can say turn it off, and that means it's no longer visible. I can turn it back on again, and now it's visible again. This is like turning on and off the visibility here, but it's enabled, so snapping is enabled or not here when you do this. Transparency of the reference file, and then the overlay color. If I want to make the overlay color, I can say yes, and I can change this to, let's say, red. And now everything in that reference file will be displayed in red or in light gray, whatever color you might want here. And then the coordinate system here and whether the coordinate system matches between the projects. This is an important issue when you're starting to work with coordinate systems. So it tells you what the coordinate system is defined in this reference file, and it tells you whether it matches with the current project or not. And if it doesn't, you may have a problem, so be careful about that. OK, so this is how the reference files work. And the nice thing about this is that when I've got a reference file, not only can I snap to it here, and I can now say I want to make a reference surface from this. So a reference surface basically makes a copy of the file surface that I select into the current project and just references it back. So no data gets transferred. But by doing a reference surface, you can see through to the other project and then use that for doing volume calculations and also to be used with things like tie slope, side slope, um, corridor modeling, or even the rock pile slope designer calculations too calculate uh, projected side slopes to the reference surface. So let's take a look at how that works for things like volume calculations. So if I've got the current reference file loaded here, 
uh, I've got the surfaces list over here, which is the reference file. And I've got my design surface loaded in here. I can turn that on. And these other surfaces are just takeoff surfaces that aren't being used right now. So what we can do is we can go to the RPS CAD function, go to reference surfaces here. And in this case, I'm gonna name the surface ref dash existing. And I recommend that you use this kind of syntax here, ref dash, because that way you can see in the list of surfaces which surfaces are reference surfaces and which ones are normal surfaces. So then you get asked to pick the reference file and then pick the reference surface in that file, which is the original ground brackets two, and say apply. And by doing that, you've basically made the surface enabled in this particular project, even though if I turn off the reference file, you won't be able to see anything, but the reference surface is actually here. And when I do things like a, a surface slicer through this, for example, if I click on here, you can see there are two surfaces here, my reference uh, surface for my existing and my design surface here. And if I look at the surface list here, you can see it comes up here. You can see it's got, if I turn these two off, I've got this just these two surfaces. And now you can see them here. And if I click on the reference surface here, that's the existing reference surface, and this is my design. So now I've got them in a project. Now I can use them, I can visualize them as well. So if I go to 3D view, for example, I can see my reference surface, which is here in light gray, my existing, and I can see my design surface here. If I turn off the design, you can see the full existing. If I turn it back on again and turn off the reference, you can see the full uh, design. I have to turn off the reference files to stop it from showing up. Okay, so that's basically showing you how the surfaces work, and then I can do volumetric calculations between those surfaces. I run and go to the surfaces menu here, and I run earthwork report. I can do a surface to surface volume between the reference file uh, surface, the reference existing, and the design surface in the current project. Pick my boundary in the normal way, specify these other parameters and say okay. And now that's gonna run me the volume report between those two surfaces. Same thing with cut fill maps. I can do a cut fill map between a current surface and a reference surface um, to generate cut fill report. So let's just take a look at that. There's my earthwork report between these two surfaces just to prove it works. And then I can also do things like a cut fill map between these two. So if I run cut fill map between these two, you'll see that there's an isopack here. If I go to the properties of it, that's also an isopackite uh, surface or a cut fill map. So I can go here and say, show it by elevation. And um, if I say, show the wireframe here in the plan view, and then do the same thing here in the 3D view, you can see there if I turn off these surfaces, Except the um, here you can see there's my cut fill map again being generated from those two surfaces. So pretty much any function where a surface model is involved, a reference surface can be utilized. Now reference surfaces have two uh, two things you need to know about them. One is you cannot add and remove surface members to a reference surface. Um, that basically, if you want to change a surface that's used as a reference surface, you have to change the surface in the source file. And then the other thing is that a reference surface can be used for pretty much anything where a surface can normally be used. So let's see how an updated reference surface works. So right now we've got this surface over here. If I open up this other TBC project where my reference surface is here, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna draw a 3D line along the bottom edge here of my model. So let's go to the um, CAD menu and let's say create a line string. And I'm just gonna call this one add line and let's put it on layer zero is fine and say okay and now I'm just going to draw a series of points along here and I'm going to just take the elevation roughly off the edge of the model here and just to show a point really okay so I'm going to close that out here now so that line there is a 3d line elevated along the edge of this model here. So I wanted to add this 3D line here to the surface model. Then I can go in here to add and remove surface members. I can pick the surface to which I want to add the line work to, pick the line and then say add. That will now re-triangulate that surface in here which updates this surface. Having done that, when I press the save button, now that sends a reference across to the other project. And you can see up here in the project explorer that the existing surface um, uh, in the reference file has been updated. So here we can then right click on here and we can say uh, reload reference file. At that point now, that's reloading the surface uh, into here 
and it will update the reference surface because that's referencing to this surface. So now this surface right here is in the current project is going to be the reference surface uh, for this project here. So that's how the reference file uh, warning or uh, notification system happens. So you want to keep this open as much as possible so you can track the changes here because if you're working with two people working on two different parts of a project which are referencing to each other then when the, when the other person saves their project you want to be notified and then just hit the reload button here. And this allows you to set up uh, teamwork working on projects where you might want to have one team developing a utility and trash model, another team working on the finished grade and existing ground model and bring those two data sets together using reference files to, to, to do that. You might also want to compare two different CAD files for example um, and I'll show you how to do that in just a second here. So that's reference files with surfaces um, and reference surfaces. Um, let's take a look at the uh, CAD referencing uh, system. Okay, in this example, what we have is we have a project file open, which is called Rev1 versus Rev2 comparison. And then we have two CAD files that it's referencing, reference, uh, rev, rev, uh, revision 1 and revision 2. And so this allows me to open up a blank project and just open up the two revision files. Now these two files came from a revision 1 CAD DWG file. This came from a revision 2 CAD DWG file. I imported these files, exploded blocks, cleaned them up and made some view filters. Uh, to separate the data into layer groups, but also to make it easy to turn on and off common data, for instance, for the buildings or for the parking areas or the contours, etc. I did that same work in both these files. So now I've got two reference files that have a similar data structure with similar view filter names, and I can then use those with a third project where I'm looking at these two in the background, one in color gray and one in color red, so I can see directly the differences between the files. Let's look at that in practice. So in here we've got the plan view. You can see the gray data is reference file one or two. So let's take a look at reference files here. So if I scroll down to the bottom here, you can see I've got reference files CAD one and two. So let's turn off reference file two for a second. And you can see that reference file one is set up in light gray. And currently, if I look at the properties of that, what I'm doing here is looking at the file name, I'm looking at the view filter that's been applied, which is for the finished grade contours. This shows you all the um, view filters that have been defined in that particular project file. I'm ignoring the lock file. I'm saying that the file is enabled. I'm saying the transparency is zero. The override color is set to yes, and I'm using gray as my color for that. That way I can see it clearly against the color of the other reference file. Let's turn this one off, and let's turn this one on. Okay, so in this one it's showing a different view filter, so I can now go to the properties of this one. And again, using the same file, this time I'm going to change this here to the finished contours. And you can see now I've got the red finished contours for the revision 2 file. I've set my overlay color in this one to red. So let's turn both files on now. So now you can see the revision 1 and the revision 2 data on top of each other. Anywhere where the revision 2 file has changed, should stick out like a sore thumb. Okay, here we have it. So the contours are very similar, but they're offset significantly in these areas between these files. Up here, they're fairly similar. Up here, they're a little different. Up here, they're different. Up here, they're quite different. And so very quickly, I can see that revision two has a change grading model, which means I'm gonna to have to rework the grading model in all of those areas. You can see the idea here is that you can build reference files, clean up the CAD, get them sorted out, and then you can do direct comparisons between two reference files very easily. So in this example, I have an existing terrain surface, a finished grade model for a site project in this current project, which is called Takeoff Surfaces and Strata, along with all my strata layers as well. So I can turn on my clay and my rock and my soil layers, and you can see all my uh, strata surfaces generated from boreholes. So in this case, I've set one crew up with developing the finished grade existing and strata models for the project. In a second project, I have all the utilities, and I've set a second crew up with developing the water mains, the storm sewer, the sanitary sewer, and then the other utilities for the project. And both teams have been given the reference file for the other one. So in this case, you can see this one is referencing the surfaces and strata layer. And if I go back over to this one, this one is referencing, if I go to Project Explorer, this one is referencing the takeoff utilities and trenches. So both teams are basically working on their own project. Both have the reference file for the other one loaded. 
And so in here, when you're working, you can turn off the reference files so that you can't see the information. But when you're ready to see it and share it, you can turn on the reference file data here, and then you can see the trenches and utilities uh, for that project. So if I, you can see here the trenches and utilities that have just come in here with the pipes and everything else uh, for the project. So if I turn off the surfaces again here, now you can see the utility model from the other project. And you can do that in both directions. So the beauty of this is that now you can work in teams, working on a corporate network where you're sharing a folder location for reference files. And then you can load those reference files into a project, as many as you want, and see the other people's data live on here. And then be tracking this function up here to see when this text goes red, when the other team happens to update and save the project, causing a change uh, that might be important for you. So this way you can develop your models in tandem. And the nice thing about reference files is you can show all the information from the other project. And that includes things like PDF files, CAD data, model information, surface information, corridors. Any of that kind of data can be displayed and shown across the referencing system. So this hopefully shows some of the benefits of reference files for construction. You can use it for project revision, checking. You can use it for splitting the work up into multiple teams so that each team can do its own piece of work but reference the work of others while they're working. And you can also use it for all of your design, uh, surface modeling, information, that kind of thing where you're being able to do volumes between weekly surveys that you may store in different projects as you go. The nice thing about it is you can split the data up into multiple projects, which makes each project easier to work with on its own. But you always have access to the data from other projects for visual representation purposes and also for being able to check and validate how two things interact and for computing design uh, surface slope information as needed. Now, the other thing that you might get asked is, if I've got reference file data, can I move the data from the reference file into the current project or from the current project into the reference file? And the answer is yes to that. Rockpile Solutions has added a new set of commands as part of this release called RPS Copy to Clipboard and RPS Paste. And when you use those commands, it allows you to select information from one project and then paste it into another project using a virtual VCL format. And we'll show that in a separate video. But look for the RPS copy to clipboard and RPS paste commands, and uh, hopefully that will give you uh, what you require. Okay, thank you.